Oh my God, uh, an amazing guest on the line. This is going to be a real treat for everybody. Uh, Bill Holter of the incredible collaborative minds, uh, collaborative efforts of JS Mindset. Uh, the website is jsmindset.com. We'll have the links in the description area from precious metals to geopolitics. They having a real unfiltered insight on the economy. Uh, Bill Holter does not hold back, and, and we've got a taste of him before. Here he is once again. Bill, thanks for coming up. Thanks for having me, Kenneth. Bill, there seems to be lots of dysfunction currently in the markets. Uncertainty with rate increases. Gary Cohen just left the White House out of disagreements on the tariffs. And uh, Wall Street is falling today as we speak as Cohen's exit adds to the quote-unquote trade war fears. So let's get your thoughts on this as it relates to the economy. Well, first off, uh, absolute free trade is best. But that's not what we have in the world. We do have, uh, there are tariffs all over, uh, and many of the deals that the U.S. has done in the past have been U.S. negative. And that shows up in the trade deficit numbers. As a matter of fact, uh, I think yesterday the, the trade deficit blew out again further. That's happening with a weak dollar. So that should tell you that the dollar needs to be even weaker. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, Trump is out there creating this quote unquote war. But even if he's bluffing, one of the things I was saying is this might actually cause other countries to renegotiate. And maybe there might be some positive that comes out of this, despite the fact that not having free trade is a bad thing for the U.S. Well, first, first off, uh, tariffs slow trade. I mean, they're an, they're an obstacle to trade. And that's during, during normal times. And these are not really normal times because the world is now more indebted than it's ever been. And if you slow trade, you're slowing, if you want to call it velocity, uh, you're slowing the generation of uh, cash or, or income, if you will, which makes the debt harder to pay. And I think a lot of people are not looking at it from that standpoint that tariffs, tariffs depress trade, which depresses cash flow at a time when cash flow is most needed because there's more debt than there ever has been. Right. Well, it's into, it's an interesting thing, and I was thinking about this yesterday, the concept of a trade deficit, and I'm wondering if it's even a real a good metric, because anytime you buy something from someone else, in theory, there's a trade deficit if they're not buying an equal amount of or more from you. And that's not always necessarily an indication of your financial strength. But I guess it's the fact that we've seen tens of thousands of factories close and lots of jobs shift overseas that we're feeling the impacts of these trade deals and it's being shown in the trade deficit. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think if you go back to the basic nuts and bolts of it, this is showing why going away from a gold standard in the first place was a very bad thing, because it used to be that if you ran a deficit, you paid in gold, and you could only run a deficit for so long because you'd run out of gold. And in essence, that's what, what happened to the U.S. We ran out of gold. We closed the gold window in August of, two, of uh, 1971, and gold was no longer allowed to be the arbiter, and it allowed the U.S. to pay.
pay for the deficits with freely pr uh, printed dollars. So, and obviously that's uh, what has is has and is irritating the world is that the U.S. is basically freely printing dollars that truly have no value when all is said and done, and they're they're importing real stuff and paying, you know, make believe pay. It's the never pay. I've always called it the uh, the never pay theory or never pay strategy. In other words, you pay with dollars and you promise with more dollars, but you never really truly pay. You never really truly settle hmm. because settlement can only be made in a real money, which is either silver or gold or real products. Well, the fact that precious metals right now are not showing, you know, all time highs and s shooting through the roof is the fact is a simple proof that the economy we live in is just an alternative reality. And I'll give you an an another example. When we would get positive economic results, I would say positive in quotes, uh, and this happened quite a bit during the Obama administration, we would get positive results and the stock market would actually go down because that would signal possibly tighter monetary policies, higher interest rates, and uh, maybe a pullback on QE, and the market would actually go down on positive news. And this is that alternative reality. And I guess with this trade deficit or this trade war, I'm almost wondering if in this alternative reality that this stock market seems to live in is maybe it makes it go higher just because it's always seems to do the opposite of what we expect it to do in the short term at least well kenneth i wrote uh tangent uh tangentially on that yesterday i put out a uh, public article the the title was uh basically mope management of perspective economics and that's what's happened for years and years i mean the markets now are all markets are 100 percent rigged and mope the management of perspective has been used to create and further the narrative and that's that's what it's all about is it's it's like trying they're trying to herd herd cattle and at the same time don't allow the cattle to see what's really happening right but you might want to put a link up to that it is a public article uh you can go to js mindset and and copy that link absolutely we'll have that in the description area of this very video all right, Bill. Well, let's get your thoughts on the new Fed chairman and the situation he's facing as he deals with the economy. What are just your initial thoughts on him? And what do you think he might end up doing here as we go forward? Do you think he's going to really pull back on QE? And is he going to be able to raise interest rates into this environment? Well, first off, they can't, they, they cannot uh, continue with the quantitative tightening, and they actually have uh, shrunk the Fed balance sheet for the, what the last three months or four months. They can't continue to do that because for every dollar that they tighten, it's actually sucking something like ten dollars out of the banking system because of the the uh, the, the reserve nature. So they really can't do that. They can't raise rates. We're, we're at a point, as I mentioned before, we're at a point where debt is at an all-time high. So you really can't tighten because what you're doing is you're, you're making debt unrollable. In other words, it can't be refinanced at a, a lower rate. And once you start uh, raising rates and, and things can't be rolled over, then you have a, a credit crunch and this system comes down. Uh, one other thing about Powell is that he is of the mind of bail-ins, not bailouts. So you've got your bailout guy. You have President uh, Trump, who 
obviously understands and knows how to use bankruptcy. And now you've got the Federal Reserve Chairman, who is a bail-in guy. And we know that bail-in legislation has already been written and put into FDIC, so I would think that's where we're headed. That's just crazy. Um, I mean, to, to think that they would go into the banking system and bail in the government or, you, you know, the, the it's just be well, it's insane. Bailing in, bailing in the banks, not bailing in the government. It's bailing in the banks. <clears throat> in other words, they're using taxpayer money to pay for bank losses. Last time around in 2007, 2008, they did bailouts and they used taxpayer money. This time, uh, they're not going to use taxpayer money. They're going to use depositor money. Well, that's even more of a reason which I was going to say is that to have money off the books. <laughs> if uh, you have some physical gold or physical silver, that's money that just can't be taken away from you or uh, just zeroed out from your bank account. Right. I mean, that's, that's insanity yeah. that they would do that. That's Jim's uh, got get out of the system strategy. You take capital out of the system, you put it into silver, put it into gold, have it out of the banking system, whether it be in your possession or in a non-bank vault. That's capital that's out of the system. It's also wise to get your stock certificates and have those issued and sent to you so you have the certificate in hand because let's say you have your account with uh, broker ABC and they go they go broke. It may be three to five years before you get your certificates and they unwind the whole thing. So if you have your shares in hand, uh, if markets are open or when they reopen, you will have the liquidity, you'll have the use of those shares and they won't be tied up in a bankruptcy of your broker. So getting out of the system, getting your capital out of the system is very important. Right. Well, uh, Bill, the Dow Jones had a four-digit down day not too long ago. This was headline news. Uh, but then it's inched its way back. It really seemed like perception is that it's going to keep inching forward. People don't believe that we're in a bear market and we're, we're still on that perception of a positive economy. And they seem to be doing a good job of maintaining that perception. But I guess just what are your closing thoughts here on how long they can keep that perception intact before maybe the floor falls out from underneath the, the market and the financial system. Well, to be clear, uh, things have changed. Interest rates around the world are going higher. Long, long, long-term trend lines going back to 1980, 1982. Uh, those trend lines have been broken, and interest rates are going higher. So there is a big change in the credit markets. Everything has been held up by credit, and if credit is weakening, and we see higher rates, we are, in fact, in a bear market. And I would just caution your listeners and, and ask them to look back. Look back to 1929. Look back to 1987. Look back to 2000. Look back to 2008. We all, each one of those times, we had an initial break, and then things would calm down, and the market started inching back. And it, we got to the point where what you're talking about right now, it, it seems like the market wants to come back. But each time, the market didn't come back to new highs and, in fact, really rolled over and, and flushed. And I think that's what we're headed toward is uh, a, a complete flushing. Mm. Wow, complete flushing. 